Hello, my name is Barbara Lewis with Singing After 40. Welcome. I'm taking a quick walk uh, in a park-like zone around where I live in Quebec. Really beautiful day, about 21 degrees. This afternoon I'm going to be working on a new video uh, about how to negotiate leaps in vocal lines. A lot of people, in fact I think most singers, find wide leaps and even shorter leaps can be a bit tricky. So I'm going to give you two or three tips about how to negotiate that more easily. So I'll see you soon back inside. Bye bye. I want to talk to you today specifically about the octave leap. This sound. So it's eight notes. It's the same note as this one, only an octave higher. This octave leap happens in a lot of songs. Um, the one that I did most recently was uh, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. This one. Chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Some singers find that that first part of the melody is difficult and they don't sing it because it's difficult. And because of that, I thought, well, why not do a video up specifically about the octave leap? But whatever I tell you about that leap also applies to any other leap that you might find difficult. Fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. And, and wider. But I'm, I'm going to talk specifically about the octave. And if you want to see my video on chestnuts roasting on an open, open fire, it's a gorgeous Christmas song, you'll find the link to it right under this video in the description. I couldn't put it on YouTube because of copyright issues, but you'll find it's hosted somewhere else. So back to the octave. I want to talk to you about two different approaches. One is, uh, and it works for any interval, but very, very good for the octave, is that you think that that top note comes down to meet the first. So if you're, if it's an octave away, then you're singing the same note here and here. You can hear that. So when you sing the first note, have that other note, that higher note, that octave in mind, and it comes to meet your first. So you're not doing yeah, yeah, there's somewhere. We, quite often we do, we singers, we often think it's way up there. And these changes happen in such a small area of the throat, it's really not that far away. But you need to have a kind of an imagination to bring those notes closer together so that they don't feel so far away. Certainly there are changes in the throat when you go from a note here to a note there, but it's not as big as we imagine. So we've got to learn to Bridge that gap mentally, emotionally too. So the first exercise I suggest you do is just going from here to here and do it on different notes. So I'll show you what that looks like. And if that's where you're gonna sing in the melody, I would practice also going E to E, going F sharp to F sharp, going G to G. So I know that when I have to sing the melody, then I'm very secure on the F because I've done the E, I've done F sharp and G. So it makes me very secure here. Dee Dee. Yes. I need quiet now. So let's start with the F. I would do yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like pulling down a window blinder. The high note, as you pull down, comes down to meet the low note. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just get used to that feeling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you're not going way up there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah is good because it's a narrow kind of feeling. The Y is helpful. If you find it's a little high, use the Nashville squint. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That gets you more twang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm making this movement, which is really, really helpful for our brains, apparently, if we use our hands to show our brain what we're doing. So you try it now. So it's just yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll do it. Then you do it. Here we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your turn. Was that successful? Let's try one lower. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use your hands. You do it now. Now try the F. Try the F sharp. Use your hands. 
by the G. Now, if you find this very, very easy, you don't need more of this video. For those of you who do have trouble with this, I'm going to give you another exercise. So two basic but powerful exercises that really will help you. All of these little tricks, little mental tricks are all important to singers. So instead of it just being three notes that you do the first note and bring the second note down, instead of just that, I'm going to do a loop so that your brain doesn't feel that you're stopping on that top note. You just keep going. It goes like this. It's easy scale passage. It's like this. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a round, circular, loopy feeling. It tricks your brain into feeling that that note's very, very doable. Here we go. Yeah. How did that feel? Let's try half tone higher. Try it again. You see what I'm doing? I'm just playing a scale. I'm going to put right here or in front of me that scalar passage on the piano so you can see what I'm doing. So these two very simple but powerful approaches to leaps can be very helpful to you, especially if you've got songs that you'd love to sing and that particular thing is difficult. And for many singers it is. So don't worry about it if you're one of the many. I also work a lot like this to trick myself into making things really close and comfortable, really accessible. So again, take a look at my chestnuts roasting on an open fire video if you love that song. I'll see you in the next video. Barbara Lewis was singing After 40 Bye Bye. <laughs>